On this episode, we dive head first into wiring. Let's do it. So this is the factory Ultima wiring harness. You can see here, it's a bunch of relays, um, fuse blocks and so forth. Um, I'm gonna end up using probably many of the connectors on this, but not the wiring harness. Instead, I'll be using the, the uh, infinity box solution, which no relays, it's all internally built in, which is, which is pretty cool. Check them out if you're, if you're curious as to uh, what that system is, but that'll make uh, dealing with this not an issue, uh, and it's, it's just a much more modern, the Infinity Box is a much more modern uh, wiring setup. So here is the Infinity Box system. Uh, the reason I chose this is I actually used this on my Factory 5 Cobra build. Uh, pretty sweet setup, so I have some familiarity with it, uh, which makes it easier on me. Uh, but there's different power distribution management systems out there, um, but I chose Infinity Box. Let me explain what you're looking at here. First and foremost, this is a CAN bus system. So all of the communication on what powers on certain terminals uh, is all communicated via CAN bus, which is pretty important as I integrate it in with my ECU system on the car. Plus it saves a ton on wiring. What you're seeing here are all the components in the kit, starting with the master cell. This is the brains behind the whole system. Uh, all ground-based switch controls. And then these are the two power cells. And the idea here is, is you put these at either end of the car where your power requirements are, uh, which shortens your wire lengths and so forth. And then via CAN bus, the master communicates with the um, power cells to trigger uh, power feeds. Here's a close-up shot of the power cell unit, one of them, and you can see where you install the fuses uh, once you define what fuses go to what and what you want triggered. So, pretty powerful unit um, that we'll get here uh, installing. First step in laying out the electronics is getting the battery positioned. So here in the passenger front footwell, you can see I've got a mock-up of a lithium battery that I purchased. Pretty small unit, uh, good amp hours, super lightweight, and that's gonna go here uh, in the passenger footwell. Got my fuse block there with 60 amp fuses that the battery will then connect to and then all the power distribution, those power modules will link and be routed from here out to the various corners of the car. Here you can see a couple of mounting plates, L brackets I put in place for the cover. I built a foot plate, a foot rest if you will, out of 1 8 inch aluminum and that's covered here to cover up all the electronics and the battery and is easily removable to service any of the fuses or the battery itself. Here's the uh, size comparison of the lithium battery on the left and the regular uh, acid-based battery on the right. There's about a 30 pound difference and uh, literally it's maybe a third of the size of the physical footprint and that, that's what allowed me to put this battery uh, in that spot on the bulkhead in front of the passenger footwell. Here you can see some battery posts I'm going to install for a remote battery charging terminal as well as a main power cutoff switch. With the main power backbone in place, now it's starting to time to start hooking up the accessories. And first, the iLift electronics, the motor, the pump, etc. And I decided to install that in the void in the passenger side pod, right at the very front of the side pod behind the front wheel. There's really a void space there, uh, and I plan on cutting an access panel in the fiberglass panel on the underside to get access to it, but this is where I decided to install the iLift ECU, the air pump, um, and its various um, relays there in the uh, void in that side front side pod on the passenger side. So as you can see, I added a, an aluminum plate in that void area to mount the various iLift components to. Worked out really well. 
out of the way, compact, and again with that access panel I'm going to put on the underside of the fiberglass side pod. Um, that will be easy to get to to service if needed. Here's the air tank. I decided to put this behind the front passenger seat and then the air uh, plumbing would then exit out the side of the seat pan that you can see here. Before I start on any of the engine wiring, I need to get the motor mounted in its final position. So I think in one of my first videos, I showed the mounting plates I made. Here I welded up some support uh, plates as well to give it some extra strength. And this is what it looks like before I actually finish weld both of these plates, passenger, driver's side, uh, into the chassis. Just sit there nice, weld it in. That'll add some rigidity to that area of the frame. Uh, and be perfect for the engine. Here you can see the motor mounts. They're on an angle to meet the angle of the factory OEM mounts. And here they are all painted, ready to go. With the motor back in, you can see the notch I had to cut out. Uh, and fortunately, it all lined up perfectly. So the next up was to figure out what I was gonna do with the engine wiring harness. I've got the engine harness stretched out here over the rear tires. On the R8 and Huracan, the ECUs are actually installed in the fender wells over the rear tires, but on the Ultima, there's no space. So I've got to figure out where I'm gonna mount the ECUs. And I think I've decided I'm gonna put it on the firewall just forward of the engine, which means I have to extend these harnesses, uh, both sides for both ECUs out towards the front of the motor. Here's a side shot of the motor and where you see these squiggly lines, that's in the general area. I'm gonna try and mount those uh, two ECUs. With a plan of attack in place, now it's time to get extending the wire harness. Here you can see I've already started extending it one wire at a time. Pretty monotonous project and task. I estimate there's probably, I don't know, 150 wires on each side of the harness that I have to do, have to extend. and. Here's what that looks like, one wire at a time. Clip it, strip it, and uh, I cut a bunch of uh, wire at uh, 26 inches in length, just black wire. Uh, throw some heat shrink tubing over the end of it, and then start soldering both ends together here. I bought this little uh, handy uh, third hand tool at Harbor Freight, which without it, and the alligator clips. I don't know how I would have done this. It took me long enough as it was, but uh, that was a hugely powerful tool in this case. Heat shrink the tubing, attach the other side, solder this one up. Again, heat shrink the other side of the tubing here. And that's the process for one wire. So uh, let's speed this up a little bit and see how fast we can get through this. some of this it's called Tessa tape I found it on Amazon actually it's the same tape used um, in the OEM harness this like fabric tape heat resistant meant for engine bays and so forth so 
uh, super sticky stuff too. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna wrap this entire loom all the way up with this Tessa tape. Uh, and then I'll show you where I'm gonna route it. show you where I'm going to route this extended OEM engine harness. I'm basically going to go, you see how there's a natural bend right here. So I'm going to go underneath the head here, underneath the head, and then in between the engine mount and the engine, there's a little tunnel passage there. So this is going to be below the headers gonna come along here and then I haven't decided basically I think I'm gonna mount the ECUs here on the firewall rear firewall engine firewall one on each side or I may build a plate that goes here to protect it from the ground anything from the ground uh, we'll figure that out but the engine harness should now reach. I've got plenty of length there um, to route it and extend it forward on the car.